Well, welcome. My name is Dan Ado, Application Engineer here for Ceratech. Today I'm going to go through this mid-surface model with very varying thickness. As you can see, this model has three-stepped uh, thickness regions on this side, and on this side it has uh, varying thickness as well throughout. So what I want to do is mid-surface this part and capture the individual thicknesses without having to assign individual properties for each one. What I want to do is hold the thickness value on the, the element card itself. So let's go ahead and start this. Let's go ahead and mid-surface it. So geometry, mid-surface, automatic. We're going to go ahead and select all the entities that I see in the screen. As always, you can hold down shift to make a box, hold down control to make a circle, and then hold down control plus shift to make a polygon for these selections. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and measure the thickest part of this model to make sure that the automatic mid-surfacing captures it. So I'm going to grab my ruler, measure from one location to another, and it comes out to a 0.225. And I'm just going to copy this value so I can use it later. Went ahead and mid-surfaced the part. Now this was released um, a couple versions ago. You have the ability to right-click on that piece of geometry, and you can do things like hide and show surfaces. So for this instance, I'm going to go ahead and hide that surface, and you'll see I got a wireframe representation of the structure. So using the meshing toolbox, I want to project those curves down into the surface. So under meshing toolbox, geometry editing, project curve, specify what I want to print, imprint. I'm going to imprint extend clean, because it doesn't go all the way to the wall. I want to make sure it's in, it cleaned up and extended all the way over. I'm going to specify this bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the curves. So the real reason why I'm doing this is I want to make sure that I get a good uh, imprint into this surface so I can control where these uh, regions of different thickness are. So I'm just going to highlight, make sure I grabbed what I was looking for. And now those entities have been projected into that surface. Now I can go ahead and hide that geometry. And you'll see that they have been projected in to that surface. If I wanted to clean it up a little bit, maybe remove those points, I could go to my meshing toolbox, grab points, and you'll see that those are easily removable here. All right, so now that I got the part mid-surfaced, I'm going to go ahead and uh, assign attributes to it. So under geometry, mid-surface, assign mesh attributes going to go ahead and select the surfaces. Now remember, I can't hit select all because it grabs everything regardless of visibility. But in the newer releases, now we have select visible, and it's going to grab the things that are visible on the screen. I'm just going to go ahead and load an arbitrary material. In this case, I'm going to use 4340 steel. And I'm going to make sure I consolidate properties based on their thickness. Now, it's giving me some feedback here in the message window that no thickness available for a couple surfaces. So those are the bottom surfaces, which never really had a uh, thickness because they all vary based on that original mid-surface creation. So let's go ahead and manually create attributes for them. So we can say mesh, mesh control, attributes on surface. We're going to go ahead and select everything that's visible again. But now we're just going to remove these top few pieces to leave us with the bottom. And for this one, we're going to give it a property. We're going to use the same material. And we'll just call this the base. And we're going to use the thickness value. If you remember from our mid-surface creation, I'm just going to paste it in here. And they're all going to be that uniform thickness. Okay. So now all my entities have properties referenced to them. And I can go in my model info tree, select an entity. And you'll notice that it gets highlighted in the view. Now, important part here would be to do a non-manifold add. Let's go ahead and combine these surfaces together so that they share uh, one common edge. Geometry, surface, non-manifold add. Like before, I can hit select visible. I can box it or however I feel like picking it. But remember, we cannot do a select all. And now you'll notice that my geometry in the tree went from a handful of pieces of geometry down to one, which is this general body add. And it's visually showing us the free edges in the model. So now let's go ahead and mesh this part. I'm going to use the meshing toolbox, mesh surface. Use the mesh attributes. In this case, I'm just going to give it a free mesh with quad fours. I'm just going to box this structure and watch it update the mesh. 
Now, if I wanted to do some more mesh refinement, create you know pads or washers around these holes, I could do that, such as geometry editing, uh, washer. Select the entity, and notice the mesh has been updated. Maybe for a reason I'm not interested in including these holes, I could go feature removal loops and make sure I add a surface mesh point to make sure that I have a node at that center location because maybe I need to tie it to something else. And I can repeat this command throughout the structure if I wanted to. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove a, a couple more of these uh, holes from the model. And you'll notice that I do have these mesh points and they stand out now and they're noticeable because now there is a thing called the mesh point editor. So quickly went ahead and cleaned up uh, the geometry to include uh, removing holes, pads, washers, or however we see fit. Now, in this case, it looks like we don't have the best uh, element quality here, so we could we could make some adjustments to go ahead and fix that if we would need to, and we could do some of our commands like our geometry editing uh, point to edge command, just to go ahead and break that little section down um, for mesh. Now. I want to increase my mesh density in this area just to show you what's going to happen next. Um, so I'm going to go to mesh sizing. I'm going to size a curve. I'm going to set it to a value. In this case, I'm just going to say 10 elements. And I want to make sure I have 10 elements on each one of these curves. It might seem excessive in this case, but um, I'll show you why uh, when we get to it. And just like I cleaned up that other side, I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up as well. All right, so now if we go ahead and we look at the thickness and cross-section, uh, you can do this with the view options or the pull-down. You notice that the base is all the same thickness, right? Because they're all reference the same property. So in this case, I want to do a command under mesh. I'm sorry, modify, update elements. And now you can say mid-surface thickness and offset. What this will automatically do, do is adjust the thickness and offset on mid surfaces based on the solid that it was created. So you need to have the original solid still in your model. Now in my case, I'm just going to select the surfaces in view. I know I don't have to select them all. I really just need to select the base, but I'm going to grab them all at once. And you notice automatically the model has been updated to include those steps. And you can tell right here where I gave that nice mesh density. It does that transition very well. Thank you for your time. Hopefully this video was beneficial. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.